Adventurance, this is Tony Cañas, and this last week of December of 2020, I have a really, really cool set of, of, of videos for you, made of three videos. And I, I like to call this set, No More New Year's Resolutions, because New Year's Resolutions don't work. Instead of New Year's Resolutions, on video one, we're gonna, talking about, we're gonna be talking about goal setting. And on video two, we're gonna, we're gonna be talking about habits uh, through the book, Atomic Habits and uh, habit setting. And on, uh, on book number three, we're gonna be talking about deep work or how, how to actually get stuff done that requires really thinking and, and really like deep work uh, through the book, deep work uh, in a world of constant distraction. So the first video is right after this. Thank you. Hey insurance, this is Tony Cañas. Today, I want to talk to you about goals. Goals and goal setting. Seven steps to goal setting like Tony. So let's talk about goals. I'm a crazy person and I, and I got 10 designations, uh, including CPCU, including my MBA, in a matter of three years. And that is an insane number of education to get. Uh, and so people started asking me all the time, how the hell did you manage to get all the letters after your name? The way I did this is using this simple uh, process. Step one, write down smart goals for the year and make them public. And by, by smart goals, yes, it's a cliche, but it works. So smart means specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and timely. A, an unwritten goal, they have to be written down. An unwritten goal is nothing but a dream. And a, in order for a goal to be smart and to be a good goal, it has to be specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and timely. Okay, so specific. What exactly are you gonna do? Okay, so if you wanna get CPCU, specifically, you're gonna pass eight CPCU tests. Measurable, eight tests. Attainable, don't make your goal that you're gonna build a rocket that, that can carry tourists to Mars. Okay, that's a bit unattainable unless you're Elon Musk, at least in one lifetime. Relevant, a goal of reading 200 books this year. You might learn a lot, but is it really relevant to get you where you wanna go? And I read a lot, but still. And number five, timely. By timely, another way to put it is time bound. So we have to be very specific on, I'm, so for example, for the goal of CPCU, I'm gonna finish CPCU within a year and a half. That's a time bind, right? So so that's time. So anyway, so that's, that's how you make a smart goal. Number two, assign weights and extra credit to prioritize between your goals. So basically, and, and the idea, and I announce them publicly, is so that your social network will hold you accountable. And then at the end of the year, give them a summary of how you did. So assign weights and extra credit to prioritize between your goals. The way that I, that I do this, I set all my goals for the year, and then the ones that I have full control over, the ones that are a matter of activity, okay? Reading X number of books, making X number of calls, having X number of networking lunches or networking phone calls, the ones that you have full control over, those get a specific grade that adds to 100. And then the ones that you don't have full control, right? So for example, in, in my job in, in sales for the Jacobson Group, I have control over my activity. I don't have control over my revenue. Revenue is a trailing indicator. Activity is a leading indicator. So you can only control your, your activity. You can only control the things that you can control. So those should add up to 100% uh, percent, and, and everything else that's important should be a, a plus. Okay, and your goal is to finish the year above 100%. Number three, track your daily progress on your smartphone. Uh, I use an app, uh, I used to use an app called Counters, and actually I'm now using a different app. I'll, I'll include the name of the new app, but basically it allows me to count how many times I've done that thing that I said I was gonna do an X number of times. Schedule time for reading and other long-term growth activities. So things like reading take time, and a lot of the activities that, that you wanna do that will help you grow are, in the long term, they're good for you. In the short term, it's hard to not do other stuff in order to do them. Schedule time to do them. And eventually, if that, if that schedule time is periodic, it repeats every week, if you stick to it, eventually it becomes a habit and you don't even need to schedule it anymore. But for now, schedule time for those things. Number five, decide on a proper sleep schedule that works for you and stick to it regularly. We'll have a whole video later on, on sleep, but basically most humans need to sleep at seven, hours, six to eight hours, somewhere in between six and nine hours, depending on who you are. If you're sleeping less than about seven hours, you're not being productive during your day. You think you are, you're trying to be, that's why you're sleeping less hours probably, but the reality is you're not, okay? There's a lot of signs that getting the right sleep is absolutely imperative. The easiest way to do that, once you figure out how much you need to, to, to sleep, the easiest way to do that is every night go to bed at the same time. For me, it's 10 p.m. I go to bed at 10 p.m. every night, religiously, almost no matter what, with the exception of the CPC Society annual meeting, and then I wake up around six. I used to wake up around five, but my girlfriend doesn't like it waking up at five. So 10 to six gives me more than enough time. Sometimes I wake up ahead of my alarm, but I always get at least seven hours of sleep because that's what I need. And, and I guarantee 
you don't need less than six. Even if you are a person that needs very little sleep, you need at least six. Chances are very good you need seven or eight. Some people need nine. Get enough sleep, make it a habit. It is unproductive to not get your sleep. Number six, big goals get done by dividing them into smaller steps and to-do list. A huge goal like get my MBA is not a very smart goal because it's way too big. Same thing with, with get my CPC, which I used as an example earlier today. You should, have, you should have goals, instead of getting my MBA, you should have goals like buy the GMAT book, research admissions for three of my favorite business schools. You have to break your big goals into little goals. Number seven, remain, remain flexible. The whole system is designed to keep you moving forward, but it is very important, important to remain flexible. Don't set goals for a decade because who you are and what you want will change as you grow. You'll, you'll adapt. So whole system is designed to keep you moving forward, but it, it's very important to remain flexible. If you change jobs, get pregnant, if you move mid-year, don't keep yourself tied up to goals that no longer work in helping you move towards your goal, okay? So always keep asking yourself, every quarter, every six months, every year, keep asking yourself, are the goals still moving me in the direction of where I wanna go? I've never, uh, several years that, that I did this goal setting and giving it uh, percentages, giving it grades and extra credit, I've never hit 100%. With extra credit I have, every year since I started doing this in 2011 has been an incredibly productive year. The entirety of Insurance Nerds is built. The entirety of my insurance career is built on this goal setting method. And it really hasn't changed. Now that I look back at it, it really hasn't changed. The, the, the keys of it has, haven't changed since 2011. It worked. So unless you're utilizing a better system that's already getting you the results you want, go with this one.